Hello, my name's Kyle Winter and this is my exercise physiology and anatomy assignment screencast. Um, my student number is Win16003628. So we'll begin with my movement analysis of football player Steven Gerrard. As you can see down here, there is the reference for this photo I got of him in the preparation movement of striking a football. Uh, so we'll get started with the main joints involved are the hip and the knee. And the type of joints what this involves is the knee is the extent uh <clears throat> hinge joint and the hip is the ball and socket joint and also so here you can see the knee are clearly involved with the movement and so are the hips uh, also the shoulder is involved as well and this is another ball and socket movement and also the, the wrist is involved as well as as you can see he's sort of rotating it upwards and this is a condyloid joint. So the main articulating bones within <clears throat> um, this movement is the fact that the knee will go is which involves the femur and the tibia, which is also known as the thigh is the biggest bone in the body, and the tibia is a bone under the knee. Of the fibula, um, and then also the hip, the femur again will once be used as an articulating bone along with the pelvis. So the agonist is initially what contracts and it is the prime mover, so it shortens, and uh, so in this case, Steven Gerrard. His hamstring in the preparation movement would be the hamstring as it is shortening. And then the quadriceps would be the antagonist, which is the one is the contraction what relaxes at the time. So in this leg, in this left leg, you can see that his hamstring is shortening so on one side on one side it will be shortening and on the other side of his leg where he's using his foot to balance and be able to strike the ball it is lengthening so it's both contrasting so ideally in the next phase what we'll get on to this should be the opposite uh this the synergists are really the things in which support the the, the agonist and antagonist whilst doing this preparation and this would be the hip flexor and also it would involve the gluteals and the abdominals so the abdominals is mainly the core and footballers usually have real intense cores and are able to do a lot of core activities well because it helps with their mobility during the game. Uh, the gluteals, obviously, as it's a muscle, what stabilizes the quadriceps and the hamstrings. And finally, the hip flexors, which allow the movement of the striking of the ball. Uh, the fixator would obviously will be mainly the gluteus maximus, as it is there to stabilize both muscles of the hamstrings and the quadriceps. Uh, so we'll get on to the next bit. So as you can see, Steven Gerrard, his quadriceps on his right leg, the one where he's about to strike the ball, is obviously the agonist as it is contracting. Therefore, the leg itself will be flexing and extending at the knee. Therefore, 
it will show that his lower part is right leg is extending, no, flexing, whilst his left leg at the knee is extending, so his hamstrings will be the <clears throat> agonist as it is lengthening and contracting. Um, also, as you can see, his foot here on his right foot it is everting, or other known as eversion. This is where athletes can sometimes pick up sprained ankles, as his foot is in an unnatural place. And also, as you can see, his art, his humerus, is abducting from his centre of the body. His wrist is. Plan to flex in. So this means, well, this means that it's facing the ground. Also, the wrist, his, his palms are pronating. This is where the palms are facing down. And also, the humerus is also extending. So it's relaxing instead of flexing. Uh, furthermore, the deltoids will abduct as well, so it will go away from the body as he's lifting and his neck is protracting. So this is the same where keep your head over the ball to let the ball not go soaring high in the, in the air. Uh, furthermore, when we get onto the planes of movement, so as you can see, his <clears throat> legs are obviously flexing and extending. So therefore this would happen on the sagittal plane as it's parallel. Uh, the arm, the humerus is abducting. So this would happen on the frontal plane as this is parallel to that as well. Uh, furthermore, the <clears throat> palms of the fore the forearm is facing down both sides, and this would happen on the transverse plane, plane, because his wrist is sort of rotating to put the palms in a pro this supinate pronated form. Uh, furthermore, um. <clears throat> This this is this will be different normally to the striking phase of the movement. So here is the post shot of Steven Gerrard again. As you can see, the re there's a reference of where the picture has come from. Uh, everything I say, we backed up by Mikado and Marib and Juan. Uh, so therefore, so we'll get into it. So again, the main joints within this movement are the same. So you have the hip and the knee, which is obviously ball and socket and the hinge. Uh, the shoulder this time isn't abducting, but it's laterally abducting. So this means that his arm isn't going outwards, but it's going upwards. So centrally, so this would occur on the sagittal plane this time instead of the frontal plane. Um, also, so we'll get onto it as well. So the shoulder again would be involved, ball and socket. Uh, the wrist again is also plantar flexing, so rotation would occur at the condyloid joint. And the palms will also be plantar flexing, plantar flexing still. Uh, as you can see, when striking a ball, normally the toes will plantar flex to get a nice cushion on the ball to strike it so it doesn't hurt your toes. Uh, this time, as you can see, his hip flexors are sort of rotating to the right a bit. So therefore, the hip 
joint will be moving and this will support the quadriceps and the hamstrings whereas this time when striking the ball <clears throat> the quadriceps are the agonist because of the extension and the hamstrings are the antagonist uh, therefore it allows that power to be put beyond the shot as the quadriceps are contracting um, as you can see his neck is still protracting that downwards um, also when his hips rotate this will occur on the transverse plane or his pelvis more than his hip um, but his hip flexion as he's bending forward a little bit this also occurs and this will occur on the sagittal plane the movement of kicking the ball will, also, will still happen on the sagittal plane because it's parallel however as you can see his legs are hyperextending, his planted foot. Um, this means that hyperextension will usually happen on the frontal plane. <clears throat> which is because it's bending up to the side a bit in parallel to that sort of movement. Um, so again, the fixators would be the gluteal still because it's helping the body st stay stable through the shot. Um, furthermore, the abdominals, the hip flexors and the gluteals would be the synergist aiding the shot, helping them strike the ball as efficiently as they can. And next time we'll get on with the... <clears throat> Cardiovascular.